Hello, I'm Ellie for Edu for Java, and this is the tutorial number four of game, Java game programming for beginners. We're going to talk about events and keyboard input. In this tutorial, we will see how the events work and particularly how to obtain from a Java program the information about keyboard events. We will also explain the concepts and the use of anonymous classes, which are the most common way of managing events in Java. We will leave aside the game for a moment and we will explain the culture of events in a simple example. I have started to use the game to explain how the events happen, but it was a bit complicated, uh, so we're going to see it first in a simple example. Let's have a look at keyboard reading example. In Java there's going to be an object which is going to listen for the events. We're going to create this object. We're going to be able to do a proper imp implementation of this object. This object is going to be called listener and this listener is going to have um, methods defined by an interface. In this uh, uh, method we're going to be able to impl implement whatever we want the object to do when the event occurs. As they are defined by an interface we're going to have to override each one of them and inside them we uh, write whatever we want uh, the method the object to do. In our example we're going to register it in, in a J panel or keyboard example. Keyboard example extends from J panel, so it will be a J panel. J panel has a method called add key listener and we pass a listener as a parameter and that's how we register it. Once the listener is registered, J panel keeps it and when J panel knows that an event has occurred, it will inform the listener object of the event. Here we can see how we can create it. We create it through a class my key listener. I did it myself and that's why it's got that name. Here down below I have written a definition of a class. I hope this doesn't get anybody confused. Inside a class we can put a class. It works as if this class was outside. This class my key listener is going to be our listener. To be able to pass it as a parameter here, it is necessary that it implements key listener. This is because our key listener only accepts objects of the type key listener. When we implement this interface, we are obliged to implement the methods of this interface. A characteristic of an interface is that we have to implement its method. In the case of this method here, I wasn't going to use it, so the implementation, implementation is empty. I have to write it because I'm obliged, but I didn't write anything inside. With the method key pressed, it is going to be called when a key is pressed. This code here is so that it prints the method executed and the key pressed. When the method key pressed, is called a key event is sent with is sent with information about the event that occurred a keyboard event this key event has a method get key code which returns the code of a key which was pressed key event has a method get key text which receives as a, par as a parameter a key code and returns a text for example if i press the a key and it has a code 38, get key code will be 38. If I write key event, get key text of 38, I will receive A. In the console, I will have key pressed A. If I press L, I will have key pressed L. And the same with key release. Going back to the constructor, we first create a new MyKey listener and we give it to JPanel through the method AddKeyListener. This is important here. We have to make the JPanel focusable. This means it has the focus. 
it can be selected. This is so that the keyboard events work. We have to make, we have to set focus output to 2. The main here is similar. Instead of adding J panel, we add keyboard example. Let's see if it works. We copy the code as always. We paste it here, and here we have the code. We run it, and we press the A key, for example. And here we can see the console. Key pressed A, key released A. Let's see with the L. Again, L, key pressed, pressed L, key released L. If we press a lot of times the L, we can see it writes key press several times. How does the events work in AWT Swing? The keyboard and mouse events are controlled by the operative system. The AWT engine, and in particular the AWT Windows thread, communicate with the operative system and knows when an event occurs. When a new event comes along, it is placed in the event queue so that it's attended by the AWT, AWT event queue thread in its turn. Let's see how this works. The keyboard. A key is pressed. The key communicates with the operative system. The operative system now knows that a key has been pressed and tells the AWT swing engine. This is this thread is called thread AWT Windows. In the case, it's Windows. If it's if it was Linux, it would be called thread AWT Linux. This thread, which is part of the engine, communicates with the operative system. When an event occurs, uh, just like when a key is pressed, it keeps it as an event in a um, queue called event queue. Uh, queue is like a repository where you leave things and then afterwards another person takes them. The other person here would be the other thread. Remember that I told you that the thread event receives received events in painted to? This is what happens here. The thread receives the event and it sends it to JPanel. If you remember, uh, we had registered in JPanel through the method add key listener, our listener. We could also use the method add mouse listener for the events of the mouse. When JPanel receives the event, it informs all the objects which were registered through the method add key listener or add mouse mouse listener. All of this is very well explained in this article here. It's a bit complicated. If you want, you can take a look, but um, it's not for beginners. Lastly, we are going to take a look at the anonymous class. In the previous example, the Mikey listener class will be only used once, so we could replace it with an anonymous class. Keyboard example 2 shows how would it be. Let's copy this code. Here we are. Let's run it. D F, 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 we can see it does exactly the same. What changed? This changed. Instead of this here, new my key listener, we wrote new key listener, which in one in just one instruction we are creating an object like the new but Writing the definition of the object, we are creating 
it in the same place. If you notice, this is the same as the class my key listener. The same code with all the override and everything. The only thing that has disappeared is the name of the class. Here we don't have my key, my key listener, just like here. The idea is uh, that we create a class that will only be used once. As it hasn't got a name, it's called anonymous. It looks a bit strange, but it's useful and the editor helps us. If, uh, for example, we get rid of this, we delete it, and we press a uh, console space, we ask for help, we tell him we want to create an interface, a key listener. And we can see that automatically it creates all the structure. The only thing I have to do now is put my code that we have here. Inside key press in this case, and the other code for key release. We can delete this, which was automatically wrote, and there we have our anonymous class. It's strange, but it's useful, and I don't have to create another class. Okay, this is all for this tutorial. See you in the next tutorial where we will, we will go back to the game. We will use this in the game.